forever. So, hello everybody and welcome to a Kitronic Tech Talk. This is one of the first tech talks we've ever done. Um, the reason we're doing these talks is because normally at this time of year we would go to the, the Bet Show in London and we get to meet lots of lots of our customers. But this year, due to coronavirus, that's not something we've been able to do. But we've taken that opportunity to do these live streams. Um, we feel it's a nice way where we can show some of our new products off. Um, I'm here today with Alistair. So my name's Kevin and Alistair's one of our designers. Um, and he's designed the products. We've been involved in the design of the products we're going to show off today. And it's actually a product we've decided to launch today too. So it's a new smart greenhouse kit. Um, so we're going to take you through that, that now. So just a few things. We are accepting comments today. Uh, Mark's managing the, the comments on YouTube. So if you do want to ask any questions, fire those across and me and Alistair will do our best to answer those later on today. Um, the video will also be available uh, afterwards so you can catch up or if you've got friends who want to watch this video, they can do. Um, do you want to say hello, Alistair? Introduce hey. yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Alistair. Yeah, I'm one of the uh, hardware engineers at Electronic. Um, so I'll be yeah. taking you through bits of this with Kevin this morning. Yeah, so we're quite excited, aren't we, about this mm. smart greenhouse. It's, it's a product we've been working on for a while. Um, but it's 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 something that we feel is a bit different that we've not really seen mm. a product like this really for for micro bit. Yeah, and we also feel it will, it will fit quite nicely into sort of some of the sort of learning that people can do around the micro bit, but also with the environment and plants and stuff like that. Mm. So, yeah, we're, we're quite excited about it. Do we want to get on and 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 show that? I think you've got the web page. Yeah, you? shall I show the web page and then we can uh, yeah look at that. Yeah, hopefully you can all see the web page now. Yeah, so we can we can see that there. And it's like I say, this product's actually gone live today. It's sort of we soft launched it a few weeks ago, so you can see it on the website, but the, the stock's available to purchase today. And as you can see, the kit varies in price, but you know, X fat is £33 for a single unit, and £30 we buy more than 10. Um, there's quite a lot in the kit, which you'll see in a minute. Um, and one of the things we're also we can show there, Alistair, isn't it? It does work with both versions of the micro bit, doesn't it? Yes, it does, yeah. The version one and version two micro bit, it's compatible with both of them. You can use all the features um, with both micro bits. Yeah. Um, so we've talked about it, sort of who could use this kit, but do you think this is a, a kit for the home user or, or for um, school users? Um, I think this kit really nicely fits in with with either people people at home uh, wanting to explore the micro bit, do some learning, uh, grow some plants at, at home, or, or it fits really well um, with a classroom setting. Um, either by, we've got the individual kits we've got here, you've got online tutorials you can do, uh, all, which we'll go through later, uh, lots of opportunities for learning and fitting in with the curriculum. Um, and we're also um, working on something later in the year, and um, we've got a larger classroom pack, which has got... Um, more focused teaching resources um, specifically designed for the classroom and taking you through different different subject areas. So I think it fits really nicely into both categories. Yeah, so this version could be used by both the home user and, and, and the teacher of students. And, and as you say, we're working on sort of one of the more resource projects as well, aren't we, hmm. uh, for a few months' time. Um, what kind of age group, Alice, did you think this is sort of targeted towards? Um, I would say this fits probably in the in the ages ages 10 or 11 to, to 16. So for the UK, that's kind of the, the, the secondary school, the high school age group. Um, it would fit really nicely in with, with what they're learning um, and, in school, but also the kind of the, the complexity of the board. Whilst well, not too complex, it, it, it nicely fits in with lots of features you can do across that age range, um, expanding on your learning, I guess, as you, as you get older and using some of the more advanced features of the programming environments um, to really tailor this to, to any age group. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I. I helped with some testing on this and my daughter's 10 um, and we did some of the tutorials with, with her. So she's yeah. in um, year five and junior school here um, and she enjoyed using it. So I think it's also something that could be used at sort of that late, mm. late primary age group too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, the good thing, um, we'll cover it later, won't we? But the, the tutorials are, are quite led, aren't they? So yes, they are. Very, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> You're just going to say you don't really need any prior coding experience, do you, really, to, to get started with this kit? No, no, because they do take. Uh, we will show you. We'll show you that later on. But it does. It's nice that it takes you through step by step, and you can you can build from from having no no prior experience to, to actually having a, a nice, fully functioning uh, product and project at the end. 
Oh, fantastic. Do you want to show any more of this web page or do we want to move on to sort of look at the product in, in the box now? I think we'll leave this for now. I think we'll return later. Uh, I'll stop sharing for now. But if we, if we switch to looking at uh, the product itself and I can show you what's in the box, let me just switch cameras. Great. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the smart greenhouse box. Hopefully you can all see it. Um, it comes in a nice big nice big box here, um, and we've got some of the features listed on the front. I'll just open up that open that up quickly, and I'll empty everything out uh, so you can see what what comes in this kit. Um, so to start with here, you can see we've got um, a booklet. Uh, this takes you through. Well, I'll go through it a bit later, but this takes you through all the setup and all the instructions uh, for building your smart greenhouse kit uh, and how to get going with programming it. Um, this is the uh, environmental control board. Um, this is uh, combined when combined with uh, a BBC micro bit. And this is what um, controls everything going on in your greenhouse and enables you to have all sorts of sensors uh, um, and things like water pumps and lights that are all working with it. Um, we've got a, everything that's out here. This is um, some little RGB controllable LEDs that can be used um, as a grow lamp in the greenhouse. So just on the, the micro bit, the micro bit is separate, isn't it? We did, you, you, that's yes, not sorry, it. yes. The micro bit is separate. Sorry, that did look, did look like it came out of the box. Um, just, for, <laughs> just for example, that is, that's a V2 micro bit here and, and a V1 micro bit. Um, you would have to have those separately, um, yeah. but, but both of them work uh, with this kit. Um, included in the kit still, at this point, we've got a water pump. Um, for watering your plants, um, an extension lead that comes with the uh, the zip, zip stick grow lamp, uh, a small screwdriver for for your the terminal blocks, um, and then oh, let's get out the bag. Um, and then to to measure the soil moisture in your kit, we've got. Um, a mini version of a product that we already sell, uh, the Prong. So this uh, this measures the, the soil the soil moisture level, so you know when to water your plants. Uh, and then we've got some crocodile clips uh, for connecting everything together. And, and probably the most important part of a, a greenhouse kit uh, is a greenhouse itself. Um, so here we've got um, uh, this tray, um, which contains uh, an area for, for planting um, seeds and growing your plants, uh, an area for the for the control board to sit into. And you've got a section here as well. Uh, that's, a, that's a water tank that's been built in uh, and it's got a nice little section that the, the water pump fits into nicely to stop it moving around and making sure it's in the right place. I, I know when we're doing some of the testing, some, some users kind of were a bit confused thinking that maybe the pump would come with um, a piece of pipe. Yes. But that's not needed, is it? Because of the design of the, the cover. No, yes, that's right. That's right, Kevin. Actually, we've got, as you see, this is the uh, bit harder to see because it's transparent, but this is the clear lid uh, that fits over the, the water tank uh, and, and growing area. And I think you can see this curved section on the side here. And um, that means that when the, when the water pump is inside and you've got the lid on like that, uh, when the water sprays up, it actually curves over uh, into the area um, you've got for for growing the plants. So no need for a, a section of tubing. Uh, it's all been built in and you can just use a small piece of tape um, like it says in the booklet, just to hold things in so it's in the right place for, for doing that. Um, so that's everything that comes in the box. Uh, we'll move the microbits to one side, kind of try and neaten up a bit. Um, you've got everything you need to get going um, with, with uh, growing your own plants at home uh, and using the microbit um, to control how that, how that happens. Um, and we've actually got a short video, I guess it would be a good time to show now, of how of when we set one up and had uh, had some seeds growing. And then I can show you uh, a bit more in detail some of the features uh, of the kit. Okay. Great. So you don't need any special tools at all, then, do you? It's just clip wires and the no, tools from the screwdriver. Clip wires and the screwdriver that comes with it, everything else. Yeah, you can just plug in like, like the, uh, the grow lamp or other things that, yeah, it's no extra tools required. Um, here's just a little time lapse we took over a week uh, when we were. Hopefully, you can all see that. This was in the office. Oh, man. There, there we go. go. These are some crest seeds, which is a really ideal um, 
Club to grow. Um, so you look at really nice. It will grow so quite quickly then, I guess. Really, and there's some obviously not too tall. They do, yes. It was this was so this was just over the course of a week. We went from seeds just being planted um, to a full, a nice full greenhouse full of full of pests. And obviously on this, we can see that the LEDs are showing different colours. I mean, there you go, it's more of a rainbow and you can see white light a lot of times. So I guess you can do learning around the effects of coloured light on, on, on the plant growing, should you wish to. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's really, yeah, you can you can control all, all the colours on that on that grill app, which is really good. And you can, there's one of the tutorials, which we can show some of later, actually takes you through some of the reasoning behind uh, why you might want different lights uh, for different growing conditions for the plants. Yeah. Um, and, and very, just, very blue peak. Sorry. So I was just going to say then, obviously it's not summertime here now in the UK, is it? But um, the fact it's got the lighting would mean you could you could use this as a project all year round. Uh, yes. Yeah. That, that that's that's definitely the case. Um, yeah. Whether it's winter or summer, you could use this. Either you could put it on a windowsill in the summer and have, have natural sunlight falling on your plants. Um, or as we saw in the video, uh, and as you can see here with my uh, demonstration one set up, um, I've got it. So you've got, um, you see the LEDs in the in the lid just here. Okay. And you can turn them on to, to, to be on your plants. You can see that our, our, our greenhouse at the moment is quite full of cress. Uh, it's growing quite tall, um, and quite tall in here. Um, but yeah, you can, you can have it so that the, the lights can be controlled to turn on and off. Um, even using the, the light sensor that comes on the microbit um, screen itself, uh, the LED display, which I'll just show here, the LED display uh, on the microbit can also double as a light sensor. Uh, and in some of our setups that we did, we've used that to control when the grow lamp can turn on. So it sees when it's dark uh, and turns on the lamp uh, when it's needed. Um, shall I take you through some of the bits in, in, the, in the kit itself and some of the features of the control board? Yeah, that'd be great. Great. Um, so hopefully you can see, see it here, and I, I can hold another one up if, if you can't. Um, uh, there's, there's quite a lot of features uh, on the board itself. Uh, so there's this, this edge connector here where you can see the micro bit uh, is plugged in, and that provides access to, to everything on the micro bit that you, you'll be needing to, to control our board. Um, there's a power switch uh, down here, and you can see the little LED hopefully turning on and off uh, there. Um, and then going up this, this same side, we've got some terminal blocks uh, along here. Um, and we've got our water pump connected to one. Um, that's a, it's a high power output, which means it can, can really nicely handle controlling things like a water pump, or for instance, you might want to add a heater to your greenhouse or, or a small fan if you're needing to cool things down. Um, and there's two of those there available for use. Um, we've got another terminal block here for a solar power input, which we'll go into in a bit more detail uh, later on. Um, moving around the side, um, there's the connection uh, point here for the grow lamp. Uh, the zip stick plugs in there um, using uh, this cable, um, which you can see which plugs in nicely there. And then you've got flexibility, oh, sorry, flexibility to move your grow lamp around uh, as you need it. Um, there's also some sensors on board. Um, so you can be understanding, I guess, the environment that, that uh, is within your greenhouse. Um, that's on here, uh, this small silver chip. And that can uh, measure the temperature, uh, the humidity, um, and, and the pressure, uh, the barometric pressure in the environment, um, which is really helpful um, environmental parameters. And you can clip on, as I said before, your, uh, your prong, so you can measure the moisture level um, uh, in your plant soil, um, so you know when it needs to be watered. So um, where, where does that clip to, though? Is that those pads? So that actually goes onto these clips at the top, um, and you can see here, um, there's some labels, uh, 0, 1, and 2, if you can read them. Sometimes the lights are a bit higher. You've got pins 0, 1, and 2, and uh, those link up with pins 0, 1, and 2 on the micro bit. Um, so in, in our greenhouse we've got set up here, um, it's clipped into to pin 1. And then you've got further ones down the side here uh, for 3 volts and ground. So you can clip in some of your other, your other connections here. Um, so you can power your, your prong um, and, and read its sensor input. And those are really, really handy uh, tool-free connectors, just using those crocodile clips 
um, that come with it or other crooked old clips. So there's, there's spare connections there for other things should you want to use them, I guess. Exactly, yes. You could you could clip on multiple uh, devices here and read in multiple sense inputs or control something else uh, going and, out. I mean, I've just, I mean, I've not really thought about this, but I guess then if you, if the user afterwards wanted to build their own sort of, sort of bigger greenhouse, you could have more than one prong and also more than one pump. Definitely, yeah, yeah. I think that that's that's partly what we've thought this thought this through to include. And um, you might want to start out with something like this, but certainly for some of our school-based projects, uh, something we've thought about is actually you might want to just use the electronics uh, to build your own greenhouse um, and, and use what use what's in this kit and expand it further. Yes. Yeah. So they wanted to grow bigger plants and, and they bought a propagator from a, a garden centre, then that it, it could be used with that too. Yeah. Afterwards. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Um, the final features to show, we've got, we've got an onboard uh, speaker, uh, a buzzer on here, but if you're not using a V2 micro, which it's just got one, so you can have some audio output, maybe an alarm to tell you that it's time to water your plants or, or that you've run out of water in your water tank. Uh, and here we've got uh, a real-time clock. So you've got a, a, an onboard clock, um, so that means you can set up uh, a schedule for when to, when to water your plants, when to turn the lights on and off. Um, and you can also use this uh, product for, for capturing and logging the information uh, about the environment uh, that it's in. So it's, there's a lot of onboard features there, and it's all been set up set up nicely here in, in, this, in this little demonstration we've got here. And it's all working nicely. And we, as I say, we had one running for a full week, looking after the plants all by itself, um, using that watering schedule, using the light sensors to to check when to turn the turn the the grow lamp on and off, when to turn the pump, when to turn the pump on, um, and telling us when we needed to, to fill up the water tank again. Okay. So it's all quite neatly in there together. And on the front of it, there's some LEDs as well, isn't there? Oh, there are, yes. Um, I will just tilt this up so hopefully you can see and so I don't pour water on myself. Um, <laughs> I've, I've set this up. Uh, so when I pressed, if I press this button, it tells you, or that tells you the, uh, the temperature at the moment. It's a bit chilly in here. And um, if I tap the microbit logo, I'm holding it correctly, sorry. Oh, this is telling me it's actually a bit dry at the moment in the in the watering environment, but you can see the LED turned on there and I use the, um, you might not be able to hear the audio, but it played a sad little tune to tell me it's a little bit, a little bit dry in, in the water environment. But there's three LEDs along the front here, which you can use um, to give visual information about things like temperature, uh, water moisture or, or the humidity level. Um, separate from those, um, the grow lamp on the roof. Right. I mean, one of the things I think it might be useful for users to know is that all the parts that are in the kit, um, the electronic parts like the pump, um, the board itself that, and the mini prong, that they are things that we also sell separately, aren't they? So um, if people, you know, do want to make their own project up and then not keen to buy the kit tasses, they can buy the individual boards. Yes, yeah. Uh, but the beauty of the kit is you get all the tutorials and you know the, the guidance, I guess, for the user. So um, extra part wise, then the user will just sort of need a micro bit and the USB lead to program the micro bit then. Yeah, so some of those extra bits, I'll just put those, I'll put the uh, greenhouse to one side so you can still see it. Um, but then I'll put, so you'll need a micro bit. Um, uh, you'll also need to program your micro bit like you do with all those products. You'll need a, a, a USB cable. So you'll need one to one end to plug into your computer, standard, and then um, a micro USB cable to plug in uh, to your micro bit. And that's what you need for, for programming. Um, the greenhouse runs uh, from either batteries. See on, on the bottom here, you've got uh, uh, three times AA uh, battery cage, uh, which just takes normal AA batteries. It uh, can take rechargeable and non-rechargeable. Uh, but it's also, hopefully you can see this here, on it with my pen. It's got a DC barrel jack. Uh, so that can take a five volt supply, um, which will look something like, something like this. Um, and you can plug in there. And I think Kevin, you've got an example of actually what, what if you didn't have a, a, full, a full power supply like we've got here, Actually, we sell a USB uh, to DC connector, which could then be used with a phone. A phone yeah. Multiplier. So I've got just a standard phone charging uh, PSU here with a USB connector in the in the top, and we have a lead, don't we, that converts that to 
a 2.1 millimeter barrel jack and they're, they're low cost leads. So if people have these kind of power supplies kicking around at home, they could use that to power the board, couldn't they? Yes, yeah, that would be a really good way to do it. It would be important just to note that you wouldn't, wouldn't want to plug it directly into your computer um, because that, that limits the amount of power supply that can get to get to the board. So using one of those phone supplies would be would be really good. Yeah, and what kind of power requirement would, would you need for the power supply? Um, so to, to use the features that I guess we've shown and it's got set up with a normal kit, uh, running a pump every now and then every few hours and turning the LEDs on and off, you're probably looking at a one amp supply would be fine. Um, if you were looking to have multiple things connected, so multiple high power outputs being used, perhaps using the lamp really brightly all the time, um, we're perhaps looking up to two, two and a half amps. But for general use, one of those one amp phone supply uh, would be really, be really handy. Yeah, they do commonly seem to be about an amp, don't they? Sometimes are a bit higher. Um, yeah. But so, I mean, people really want to check, don't they? But it, you can, you know, most people do have these kind of things knocking around. So that's why we've not included it in the kit, have we? Because it just adds cost that people probably don't need to, to spend. Exactly, yes. And on the on the batteries, if, if you wanted to just run it from batteries, uh, when we've been testing it, just using those those small power supply requirements, you're looking at it running for two to three days uh, on, on a standard set of, of AA batteries. Um, so that, that's a good length of time before you need to replace any. But if you're doing a, a really long-term project, you probably would want to look at plugging it in. Yeah. Okay, great. And then there's some extra features of the board, isn't there, that we've not covered yet? Yeah, there are some extra features. So I'll, I'll, have a, I'll take you through some of those now. I'll try and try and keep it held up. So as I mentioned earlier that uh, in this row of terminal blocks, uh, the one at this end uh, is a solar power uh, input. So that can take um, a solar panel uh, like this one here that we sell. Um, and if you put rechargeable batteries uh, into the battery cage, um, then you've got um, an alternative to, to powering from a wall supply. Uh, we found that um, in even in British sunshine uh, in, in late autumn and early winter, that was that fully charged the batteries in, in seven hours and then kept it going, um, running really nicely um, for, as, for as long as you want, really. You've got that, you've got that power supply option um, that's a bit separate. And it, we've included on the board uh, the safety feature of a reverse blocking diode so you wouldn't have any problems charging your batteries. Um, no, so you just literally need to screw in the correct on um so the cell and yeah, just just the, just the bare leads into there and then you can use the same screwdriver that came with that comes with the kit um to, to connect those up um so that's really useful really good that you can have uh, renewable energy uh, with your environmental project um there was also we talked about the the high power outputs uh, a bit so that's what we use to control the uh the water pump um, and both of those connections there um can can output uh, one amp um, at the power supply voltage. So whatever your battery voltage is or whatever your power supply um, you've plugged in is, it will output that voltage. Um, and, and that means it's isolated from the microbit. So although the microbit controls those pins, you haven't got any safety concerns about drawing current from the microbit. Um, it can just really be, be used to really help you turn those on and off. And there's some LEDs, isn't there, next to those? Um, uh, there are LEDs, yeah. I don't know if you can see uh, if, I, if I pull this one a bit closer, I'll take the lid off. Can you see a little red LED turns on? Yeah. So that just that's really useful. That tells you uh, the red LEDs tell you when the high power outputs are on. And if you look under the under the leaves here, a bit harder to see. There is a green LED on. That tells you that, that you're reading something from the uh, into or into the the not one and two connections at the top. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of thing that's particularly useful with, with students, isn't it? Because, you know, sometimes they're trying to debug their code and they think they've turned the right output on, but, you know, maybe they've not connected the pump or the, the prompt to the correct place. Yes, yeah, um, yeah that's true. Yeah, um, go on, sorry. Sorry, no, no, you can you can No, I was just saying, I was just, in my experience, that's quite a useful little feature. It can save you quite a lot of time in the classroom or, or, or at home. Yes, definitely. I, I agree. Yeah, it's been really helpful knowing, knowing which things you've got on and off at the time and whether, whether something's connected properly and you can tell if it should be working when the LED's uh, running. I think the final thing just to show on the board, the final extra feature, uh, it's not, again, not something we've included um, in, the, in the initial kit, but there is a servo connection uh, just behind the, the grow lamp zip LED connection. Um, so you could add one of, one of the servos that we, that we sell really easily, one of those uh, modeling servos. And you could use that 
uh, for instance, particularly if you're building your own your own greenhouse, just using this kit or even with this one to perhaps automate open and closing the roof if you wanted to allow cooling to take place, uh, open and closing a window if you're if you're building your own. Um, a server server can be a really helpful addition, and that's all included in the software with it as well for how to control that. Um, yeah, so you could do heating and cooling. Yes. Bathrooms. So you talked about a fan earlier, didn't you? Also being something that you could connect to on the high power outputs for, I guess, similar reasons. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Why were Why were there? Um, uh, so I've got a couple of questions. I think it might be nice, nice time to cover them. Um, so Stuart was asking. It's um, he's a little bit worried about the electronics being so close to the water, and do we have an experience of of that? Okay, that's a really great question. Thank you. Was it Stuart who said asked that? Thank you, Stuart. Um, we, we have we have thoroughly tested uh, this product and we have made sure that um, things getting wet doesn't cause a problem. So we've, we've purposely uh, sprayed water from the, the water pump uh, onto the control board uh, and, and kept things working. And it, obviously it's advisable not, not to do it purposely, um, but even once we dried ours out, everything was working uh, as we expected. And actually with the way the lid is designed, um, with the water being at, in this corner, uh, spraying out and with the control board being in the opposite corner actually no water is ever really sprayed from from the water tank uh, onto the electronics there's not been a problem at all with that no. uh, experience so far i think though once you get water and children you it's good to know that we've tried it with the with getting the board wet because it's we have we have tried it and we've <laughs> kept it in a, in a moist environment as well as you might be in, in a hot greenhouse you know it's a bit muggy and a bit more humid and actually that's not caused a problem at all uh, for the control board and everything's worked fine Great. Thanks, and then he also asked about connecting heaters, which I think we've, we've been covered already, haven't we? So yes, um, I guess that's provide the heater will run off the voltage and the current that that output can supply. Then that's fine. Yeah. Um, you can get kind of ceramic heaters, can't you? That are sort of just two wires on that you that like heating pads, aren't they? Yeah, you can do. Yeah, those would, those would be, those would work really well. I guess if you're building your if you're building your own little greenhouse with this, um, that could be a really good way to do it. Yeah, I mean a common thing with a lot of greenhouses they have. Um, frost radiators don't do that on high power heaters but they 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 prevent frost occurring within mm -hmm. the greenhouse and spoiling the crop yes yeah okay so that's all the questions we've got so far let's just, just we move on then to the book the booklet the tutorials yeah yeah so we've got a little look at the booklet i only saw it briefly earlier um uh, so oh, i might just move things to one side just so we can see things a bit more clearly. So the booklet um, that comes with the kit um, uh, really nicely takes you through step-by-step step, uh, how to get going um, with your smart greenhouse. Um, so it's got a, a big list here of everything you should have uh, in your box. Um, some information about how to get going with the, the software side of things, how to program this, uh, which I'll go through um, after we've had a look at the booklet, we've got some examples of how to show you setting up a project. Um, there's information about uh, about what's on the board, some of the things I've taken us through just now, and there's some step by step how to build how to build your your smart greenhouse and make sure things go uh, in the right places. Um, we covered this quite a bit, didn't we? As well, in that um, we we sent this out to a number of testers, didn't we, to get feedback on, and we you know made changes to make it easy to follow afterwards. Uh, yes, we did. Yeah, we we re we really took that advice on board uh, and made some changes to the to the final book that you see before you. Um, it has had that has that has had that input in from users um, who've tried this product out in the real world, uh, not just as engineers uh, in, the, in the lab. Um, so yeah, hopefully this is this is all all that you'd need to get going. Um, and there's even some troubleshooting tips uh, should you have some uh, issues with connections or, or with some water leaking or or where your microbit is. Uh, supposed to go uh, and there's always the opportunity to, to ask our, our great customer service team uh, if you've got any more problems um, but that's all all handled in the book and then again there's step by step going through how to just test that all of your features on board uh, work um, with the make code software uh, that we'll go and have a look at now okay so th this booklet then is more is it just to make sure you've built the board correctly or the, the setup correctly or just to familiarize yourself with the sort of key features um, I think that would be a good description it, it gets it makes sure that you that everything's connected correctly so you've not got any problems when you start doing uh, fuller projects uh, and, but it also introduces you to, to the basic controls um, of everything on the board so that you know where everything is um, you know those basic uh, blocks in the coding environment um, for how to 
how to get going with with everything on everything on board really and should, should we take should we go have a little look at the uh, programming environment now yeah that'd be great because i mean this is where it is the more in-depth tutorials are online aren't they uh yes yeah so i'll just you'll see my face again briefly um, and uh, <laughs> and then let's go let's go across to to make code so for people who haven't used make code before it's a microsoft product isn't it and it's it's actually free isn't it make code you, you know you don't have to pay for um, for the software and it's all web hosted so yes. um, you can go to i think it's makecode.com is it for them uh, makecode.microbit.org gets you to the uh this this page that you can see here this is the starting page for every project you do in makecode um and it's, it's a really nice friendly um user environment as well and you can yeah. see this if you're really new to make to microbit and makecode there's some basic tutorials just to get you going uh, with the microbit itself um, but once you want to get started, you can click on this big purple button, the, the new project, and we'll call it, let's call it something like Smart Greenhouse, give it a sensible name, and you can click Create here. And this will open up the programming environment. Um, so again, it's a, it's a nice, nice, simple layout. Um, you've got um, a little simulator of what might be happening on the microbit on the left. Then each of these little tabs here um, just shows you um, those blocks that you can you can drag in uh, like this uh, or drag out again uh, to get rid of there. And those are all the basic blocks that come in every time you start a new project. Uh, but to make things a bit easier uh, for the smart greenhouse, uh, Katronic has actually created our, our own extension, they're called our own, own little blocks that we can bring in to, to make using the smart greenhouse uh, even more straightforward. So if you click on this uh, cog in the top and then on extensions here, it'll bring up this search bar. And if I just search greenhouse, uh, you've got a picture of that board that we showed you earlier and uh, the Katronic Smart Greenhouse extension. I'll click on that now. Um, and this will just, it will add a new tab you can see here, Greenhouse. And that's got all the, all the blocks you need uh, for creating projects uh, with, with the Smart Greenhouse kit. So what's the point to having the custom blocks then, you know, from is it just ease of use for the user? Um, yes, mostly. So, so some of the stuff that goes on in the background um, is quite hard to, would be quite hard to program using just the blocks uh, you, you've got in the basic make code setup. And actually, rather than worrying about having to having to learn all, all of the, the stuff that's on at the base there, this brings to the top uh, the things you need to actually control what's on the board. Um, so we've got controls for the, the lights, the zip LEDs, and you've got controls for the clock, uh, the different sensors, uh, pressure, temperature, and humidity, your various inputs and outputs, like the high power outputs or, or reading in that um, moisture sensor. And actually something we've not talked about a huge amount at the moment, but I can just show you here briefly, uh, a data logging section. So this means you can, um, I guess at different time slots throughout the day, capture information um, about what's going on in your greenhouse, whether it's the temperature, how often you've watered, um, and what the daylight level is like. You can, you can log all that information and actually transmit that to a computer um, and then use a program, uh, a spreadsheet program, perhaps like Microsoft Excel, um, to, to analyze that data and look at it. And there's actually one of the online tutorials takes you through that whole process. Excuse me, takes you through that whole process um, and learning how to do that um, from scratch. So the, the, our custom blocks just make it much quicker to get to get to grab get, uh, get to grapple with the, the smart greenhouse itself rather than worrying about um, things in, in the background. Fantastic. And then you just download as you would normally, wouldn't you? Connect to microbit to it, download the program in. Uh, you would do yes. I, I actually, um, if I just flip flip screen, hopefully, can can you see the can you see a new screen, Kevin? No, I can't. No, it's just... I'm, on, hold on a second. You might see my face again briefly, <laughs> and then. Uh, this is a challenge with Zoom and sharing the right content. It is, yes. Yeah, we can see it now, yeah. Great. Um, so this is actually uh, the, the program that I showed you by pressing the buttons on the mic a bit earlier, doing the watering, um, turning the lights on and off. This is actually that program that I wrote earlier. Um, so what, once you've got it, got it all in there, got everything set up that you want, uh, you just plug your USB cable in uh, with your, with your mic a bit attached, and you can click the big download button here. Um,
Yeah, if you paired a device, that would be automatic, wouldn't it? It would be automatic if the if the pairing was if the pairing was working, or it downloads it to this this bit here. Yeah, and you can just drag and drop that onto your micro bit. Onto your micro bit here. Yeah. Um, and then that that's that's your program written and done. And then you can just use that to control your control your greenhouse. Uh, so it's really nice and easy with Microsoft Make Code. Um, to do it in these blocks, but I guess you might be you might be a bit more advanced. You might not want to use a blocks-based language. Uh, Make code can still um, be really helpful for that. So you can see at the top here, we've got this toggle switch. At the moment, it's set to blocks. Uh, you can switch across to the JavaScript mode, and you can see it's all now um, text-based um, in, in JavaScript. Um, or you might want to be learning uh, Python, and Make code now has a, has a Python section as well. Um, and again, you can see it switched to um, uh, the Python language. Um, it is possible to program um, uh, different uh, sections of the uh, environmental control board of the Smart Greenhouse using the MicroPython editor. Um, however, unfortunately, because MicroPython uh, uses a lot more memory, a lot more of the capacity on the micro bit, um, you can't use all the features at once at the moment. So MakeCode is the, is the environment to go to for for being able to control everything you want to uh, with the smart greenhouse. Um, but as I say, you can switch between those different programming modes. Um, you can still program in Python using that editor, can't you? Exactly, yes. Yeah. So everything everything is here in MakeCode uh, that you would need. Um, I, think, I think that's everything with it, with the actual coding environment. Um, yeah, so is this quite, a, that, that is this one of the examples you're showing here then? Is this one of the, this is the example program I, I I was showcasing earlier when I when I was showing you the actual um, the actual board on the other camera earlier. This is the program that was running. Yeah. Um, so I had uh, things like when I pressed button A, you can see up here that turned the pump on and off. When I pressed A and B together, that was turning the uh, the grow lamp on or off, and, and all those things are happening here. And I can actually show you one of the tutorials that you might run through. Um, if That'd you be great. Yeah. And um, so again, if I, I'll switch back to the uh, the product website, which you, you can hopefully see, Kevin. Yeah. And if you scroll down, you can see there's a lot of information on this page and some good diagrams showing you uh, all about the product. Um, and there's also a video we did, uh, a pre-recorded video to take you through the different features. Uh, but underneath that, you've then got this list of resources. Uh, and we've done, as well as there being a data sheet on um, the product, there's also seven uh, tutorials taking you through a bit more of an in-depth uh, look at some of those onboard features and showing you how to integrate that with the programming environment. So for example, one of the ones I'm gonna look at, uh, tonight, this is the auto watering one. So this is setting up uh, a watering schedule. Um, so you can, your plants will be automatically watered without you having to worry. And what that does when you click that link is it opens um, the make code editor again. Uh, but you can see it looks a bit different uh, to what we saw a minute ago. And this is actually a tutorial that we've written uh, that takes you through step-by-step step, um, just showing you uh, the blocks that you need uh, rather than everything. So it's not, not overwhelming at all. It just shows you what you need. And at the top here, you've got those instructions um, for taking you through this project. And if you get a bit stuck, uh, then you click on the light bulb and there's hints there as well to tell you what you should be doing. Um, so I would, I am supposed to at this point, um, I set up I set up the zip LEDs uh, and then I, and I set up this one underneath here. And when you completed it, you're like, great, that looks like the hint. I can click next and it tells me tells me what, what new things I should do. And as you run through this step-by-step -step process, uh, by the end of it, you would you would have at the end of this tutorial um, an automatic watering schedule for your smart greenhouse that you can download to the micro bit uh, and set going uh, with, with your with your smart greenhouse. And so we've got seven of these that take you through lots of different features, um, making sure by the end of all those seven, you, you really know what's going on uh, with the smart greenhouse. Yeah, it seems to me like this is one of the sort of key things that makes this kit appropriate for younger students or inexperienced home users. Yes, yeah, I think so. I think the online tutorials are a really, really helpful uh, way to get to grips with with products, um, particularly as it takes you through step by step, it gives you those hints that you might need as you're going along, um, and means you get something really good at the end of it that you can actually use uh, with your product. Fantastic. I think we've sort of covered most of what we were looking to, to go through. Um, just trying to see if Mark's got any more questions for us that any of the users want to go through. Um, uh, I mean, I've got a couple of 
in my own head, really. You know, so we talked about plants you grow, they'd be shorter plants, wouldn't they, really? Um, unless you took it out of the standard packaging when you could use the pots with, with a, a bigger growing environment. Mm. I think if you were just using this, just using the, the little greenhouse that came, Cress is a really good one uh, to go for. And they're really, they're really uh, cheap and easy to buy as well, those seeds for that, or mustard seeds. Um, you could, as Kevin said, you could you could plant other seeds and just let them uh, grow so that their shoots that then can be transferred that you want to put those in bigger pot, pots anyway. Uh, but something else I've seen uh, more recently was something called microgreens or micro herbs. Um, they're, they're, they're specifically small cultivated plants. Um, uh, that would again grow really nicely in this uh, smaller growing environment so you, you've got a good range of things um we love doing cress because cress is uh, uh, nice and easy and, and, and kids tend to like it as well in their sandwiches and you know, some egg it's good yeah i think most of us did cress at school at one point <laughs> yes. um so you talked about the real-time clock um and that being able to use for schedules and you also talked about data logging could, could you use the two together so when you do the data logging does it log the time information yeah, it does. So you can, well, whenever I've done data logging, I've always, it doesn't just do time of day, it also does the date. So if you're setting up a big, I guess, maybe a week long project that you want to monitor some, some data, uh, you can add a timestamp to each data entry. So you can log the date and the exact uh, hour, minute and second that you, that you took that measurement or that you turn, you might want to log the times that you're turning on the, turning on the pump so you know when that's happening and you can log that all um, uh, with with the data logging code and combining that with the real time clock, so you've got yeah. really helpful information. So you can easily put that into Excel or something, then do graphs on temperature during the day, how the temperature affects how often you're going to water the plants, and all those kind of things would be easy to do. Yes, yeah, and the data logging tutorial takes you through some of that, so you can you can see the full process from having to get it off, so to logging the data to having to get it off the micro bit and, and import it into Excel to to do some some of that nice data manipulation. Fantastic, and then. Yeah, we talked about the zip LED. So they, the zip LEDs can do any colour then, the fully RGB. Yeah, fully RGB. You can do uh, all the colours of the rainbow uh, and more with that. You've got complete control over the, the level of red, green and blue that goes into those lights. Um, so you can do uh, individual block colours like primary colours or you can blend them together like perhaps you might remember from the, the time lapse video we showed. That was a mix of... Um, uh, light colours that's supposed to be really good for, for plants to, to grow really well. Um, or you can try and mix it to, I guess, mix the light to get a really good um, simulation of sunlight. Uh, but you can, you've got complete control uh, with the software blocks or with writing in JavaScript or Python um, to control what colour those are. So you could block out all the da natural daylight and then have one student's got just red light, blue light, and the one with green light, and then one with white light, and you can see impact on growing times. And, and Yeah, that would be really that would be a really good experiment to do. Uh, and because you've got the grow lamp, that, that enables that to be possible. Uh, and also the, the LEDs that are on the board, the, the three smaller status LEDs, they can be, they can be controlled completely separately um, from the, uh, the zip stick grow lamp. So you don't have to worry about turning all your lights on. You can still use those ones on the control board itself um, for, for giving you visual indications of things like temperature or humidity and your grow lamp can be entirely separate. Yeah. And you've also got all the standard sensors within the micro, haven't you? You know, you've got its built-in light sensor. It has a separate temperature sensor, doesn't it? But the, the one on this board sits within the growing environment, doesn't it? It's covered by the, the cover. So it, the, the sensor sat within inside mm. that growing area. Um, yeah, I, I guess you could, you could even talk to each other should you think of a good idea that was make you want to use the radio functionality. But uh, Between your different, perhaps if you've got multiple greenhouses or in a classroom setting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then just lastly, I know we've sort of, there's the clue board, which is quite new. Um, I mean, the form factor wise, it would fit into this board, doesn't it? Wouldn't it? But uh, we haven't got any tutorials for that yet, but that might be something to work on in the, in the future. Yeah, we ha haven't, yet, haven't yet got any tutorials for that. But as, as you say, yes, it would fit uh, physically, it would fit in. And we've tested some of the features already with the clue, and we know it would work. So just with a bit more um, testing and perhaps some tutorials for that, it would be. Yeah. So I just think for some people that might be of interest because it, it runs microfiber really well, doesn't it, that board? Um, it does, yeah. But it's, it is a more expensive board, um, you know, so it's going to add on to the overall cost of the user. But if they've already got one, this kit might be something that's of interest to them. So that's something we're going to be working on or looking at mm. in the long term. Mm. Is there anything else you wanted to cover, Alistair, while we're, before we finish and wrap up? I don't think so. I think hopefully we've gone through... Um, 
uh, the smart green house enough to get to get you interested um, to have a bit of a look at this yourself and actually it's a, it's a great kit for, for having everything included uh, in one box and just getting going with uh, with, with micro bit straight away to, to do something a bit more productive and useful in your home stick with your stuff at home you yeah. fancy creating some of your own plants even in winter it's a good one to get going yeah we're quite excited by it so it's a shame that we, we can't travel to better shit to show people but i'm sure these these restrictions will, will, will lift in the future um, so people haven't noticed, we're doing more of these talks throughout the week. We're doing one each day. So today we're covering the greenhouse. And tomorrow we're covering the new Python version of our Aventus kit and other products on different days up until Friday. So if people do want to watch any more of these videos or are interested in those other products, it's well worth watching. Um, if not, they're all available on, on YouTube at a later date. Great. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, Kevin. Uh, it's, been yeah. good. it's been good to chat with you about this product. And it's really well, good. Thank you, Alistair. I think it uh, sounded like you did most of the talking there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we really do hope that was useful for you all, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon. See you soon. All right, bye. Bye.